your faith in Jesus now. Let his power reach down inside you. He can make you hope now. I feel the power of mighty power reaching down his head.
Charles is standing in our church. Brother Mark and Carol's over at the Nazarene Church blessing them people. Sharon. <laughs> so we got Liberani on the piano here. <laughs> Uh, let's all look to the Lord. Father, we do love you today. We're thankful to be in the house of God. It's good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. One more time, oh God, we want you to meet us here. Amen. Draw us near the cross, oh God. Open our hearts and minds to thy truth. And thy word, oh God, and teach us thy ways. Let your anointing be upon the word today. We might receive it with gladness, the engrafted word which is able to save our soul. And bless the churches everywhere. Where men are gathered in your name, Lord, and we'll thank you for today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, it's good to serve the Lord, isn't it? Yes, amen. It's good to be together on Sunday morning, meet the Lord. Amen. amen. And there's something special about it. And if Valerie wasn't here, I was about ready to go get a dog sled and bring her. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, girl. And I know you had it. You've been. You had it rough. I know you had it. She's uh, on a tight skate schedule, as they call it. A tight schedule. <laughs> and, but uh, anyway, we're glad you're here. It's just not the same without you here. And that goes for all of you. We're glad you're all here today. We praise the Lord for His blessings in our lives. Isn't it good to serve the I Lord? I think I said that, didn't I? laid all those people up, man. Got I say a lot of things. I said, laid all those people up, man. Got them working all the time. crazy. But God is good, isn't He? He's good, isn't He? I don't matter. Praise the Lord. He, he Hallelujah. You he, might, he I might well laugh at me. You know, you're going to laugh at me anyhow, right? Ronnie, Ronnie right here. Ronnie right here. Ah, somebody <laughs> loves me. Somebody <laughs> loves me. I wonder who. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we're going to sing and worship the Lord today. That's, Judy, that's if she can quit the audience, she's going to come and lead our singing today. Sandra's never busy.
swear bad elves have been asked me up after each other. <laughs> that, that's all right. Uh, I count not myself to have apprehended. Uh -huh. But this one, one thing, thing I, I do, I press, press towards the prize of thy calling. How many know tonight, if you're comfortable where you're at, you're in trouble. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let me say that again. If you're comfortable where you are, you're in trouble. Amen. Because we, there's no place to get comfortable in God. You've no got to keep pressing. Keep, keep pressing. Press. Push on. Keep pressing on. Towards that mark that I might obtain. Yeah. For the That's prize. what we're here for. To obtain a prize. Yes. Like the woman with the issue of blood. I was saying today, I mean, she, she was in a press. She, pressed she was desperate. Down. She needed help. Yep. Would not be denied. And that's, I, that she might have even been singing that if she was going through that crowd. <laughs> I will not be denied. If I can just get a hold of the hem of his, his garment, garment, I know everything's going to be all right. And tonight, if we can get a hold of him, his garment, everything will be okay. Yes, sir. You know, the Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord was present to heal them all. Yes. You know, a lot of times we think we've got to have oil put on us, and the Word says that. But you know what? It don't always have to be that way. Sometimes you can just lift your hands right where you sit. Hallelujah. And the blessing of God can make you whole. Hallelujah. I'm going to try a song tonight. Brother Allen asked me. Brother Allen, you there? You can't. There he is. He asked me to do this. Good to see Allen. Praise the Lord. Good man. And I've never had the nerve enough to do it. But I said tonight I'm going to try. All uh, right. For, for Brother Allen. It says, Left Behind. How many, how many know that song? I've heard, I've heard of that. Not for a minute? Good. Louis knows it. That's good, David. Nobody knows Louis it. Louis knows it. Louis knows it. He'll be watching every moment. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he knows it. Okay. Well, give me an E chord. I, I, really, I, I've thought about this a lot. Uh, about the brother that wanted to be singing. So I'm going to try it. Don't look back. Came the call. As they fled. The burning walls in that city that love loves so much. But his wife could not resist looking back one last time. There to be just a stone left behind.
statement many times too that our oh, cancer is just a word. Well it is if you don't have it. <laughs> but when you get it it becomes a little bit more than a word. We know that essentially it is just a word. And we know that Jesus is a name that's above every name yeah. on the face of the earth and that includes cancer. His name has power over all those things. But uh, <coughs> nevertheless it's a scary thing. And uh, as you get older, your health begins to fail. You know, you, you you have to start coming to terms with these things. You know, but it's amazing how you know if you do. I this week I've I've done a lot of work around the house and different things. It's been it's been months since I've been able to do hardly anything. It's just I just uh, I'm I'm enjoying it. It's Thank good. God. I can't work for a long great long time. But uh, I took my wheels off my car and checked my brakes yesterday. Can I tell you how long it's been since I've been able to get down and take a wheel off a car? Last time I did that, I, I, I couldn't even do anything. <laughs> I was going to put some brakes on the car, and I just, and I don't know how many sets of brakes I've put on a car since I was 16 years old, but I mean a lot of them, you know. And uh, I just laid, I finally just laid on my back. <laughs> just, I just, and uh, David, David Harshie was married at least at that time. He, Come on, sir, what's the matter with you? Yes, I was going to put these brakes on this car. I said, I've been fooling around for 45 minutes. I can't even get a broke loose. <laughs> he said, get out of there. Let me take care of the 15 minutes he had them on there. You know? And that's like, I used to do that. But, uh, but you know, as you get older, you come to terms with lots of things. But, and one of the things I did, I think I've told you this before, that when I, when I started uh, uh, dealing with arthritis really bad, uh, you know, my mother had it really awful bad. And I, and I've told some of you how that uh, I uh, <laughs> I was uh, washing the dishes and uh, I started having uh, my, you know I was, I was having a lot of problems in my joints and things you know that's the way it comes and I know a lot of these old guitar players I knew an old guy named Wild Billy Henderson was a wonderful guitar player he got where he couldn't get it with the strings I mean and it was sad to watch that happen I got a friend right now that was I grew up with we learned to play guitar together. And he's played with Merle Haggard, he played with Donna Fargo. And they, they tell me he's really struggling now with this in his, in his joints, and he's just a year older than I. And uh, at that time, I told Daisy, I said, well, I guess I'm going to be like my old mother. I said, my, I, my old bones are tightening up. And, and she said, well, if that's what you want. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> if that's what you want. I said, no, no, that's not what I want. Well, what, are you then, what are you taking that on for and claiming that for like that? I said, the curse stops here. It's over. The curse stops here. And guess what? I don't have any problem with my joints today. And I really believe I could just took that on and allowed that to be. Yeah. But I resisted that, and I said, no, I don't care. If everybody in my uh, history has had uh, arthritis, I'm not going to have to deal with this on my finger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play, be playing guitar when I'm 90 years old. Oh, right. Hallelujah. And good Lord willing, the creek don't ride. But anyhow, but I'm not going to tell you I haven't had some pain, because anybody that gets older knows that. But I had started having some struggle in my neck and my shoulders. I remember one time I went to the doctor, and he said, he said, turn left as far as you can. I did. It wasn't very far. And he said, mm -hmm. yeah, see, that's, you're about that age. And I tried to just forget to send it on me. And so I started exercising my neck, you know. <laughs> I'm going to work this thing, you know. And uh, But anyhow, I got to where I had lots of pain. And so they started putting me on different types of medicine. And every type of medicine they put me on was uh, arthritic type of thing, you know. It, uh, it caused me to bleed internally, and I had all kinds of problems and I finally come to the conclusion I just couldn't I just couldn't do that. Well the outcome see me one time and I was in the intensive care. <laughs> We're all in intensive care. Yeah. <laughs> Good old days when times were bad. <laughs> and uh, finally I decided and, and and they told and I knew what it was. I told the doctor what it was and he said, they didn't believe it. Oh no that's said you got a bleeding ulcer. I said, I've never had a bleeding ulcer in my life. I ain't gonna bleed an ulcer. 
I said, I'm telling you, that medicine you get. And I knew when he took it. I knew it would do that. I took it in here. And finally decided I'm not going to have, I'm just not going to take that anymore. And I'll tell you, just decide I'm going to have good days and bad days. And I'll just enjoy the good days. The bad days, I'll just trust the Lord. And, Amen. And, and guess what? Things have been much better yeah, for right. me ever since I accepted that situation. I mean, hey. Sister Wilson used to come and she said, Oh, Brother Pat, I feel so bad in my body. She was 93 years old. I said, Honey, you're not 16. You know? And she wanted to feel 16. I said, yeah. You're an old lady. You're going to feel like an old lady, you know? But, but you know, uh, if you really put your trust in the Lord, He can help you with a lot of that. And He has done that, and I praise Him for it. And like I said, I have been able to do some things and I thank the Lord for that. You know, man feels better when you're doing things. Yes. And uh, so uh, God is good and I, I want to get in this because there's so much good in this in this today. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I did myself Thursday night, but uh, I didn't get into a lot of things I wanted to get into. But you the one here, you missed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you the ones here, you wish you had. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! God's good in you. It's a new day. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But what I was trying to uh, to, to bring to you was well, I, I will get into some of this. Uh, well, let me get let me just get started here in the eleventh verse. Uh, and as they heard these things, he added and spoke a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Now he'd been talking to them about the kingdom of God. And he said it's not, you know, Paul, went, Paul later said it's not meat and drink, but it's peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But he told us in this kingdom that he was getting ready to set up in the hearts of men. And some thought he was going to set up his kingdom upon earth, and he was going to come and save them from the, from the hands of the Romans and, and from the uh, church apostasy that was going on at that time. But see, the kingdom he was setting up was a kingdom of the hearts. Amen. And they thought he was going to do it immediately. In fact, James and John came to Jesus and said, Now, when you set up your kingdom, said, I want to be on the right hand of James. He wants to be on the left hand or vice versa, however it was. They wanted to be on the right and the left when they came into his kingdom. But he wasn't talking about that kind of a kingdom. He said, You don't know what you're, what you're talking about. But that's what they thought, naturally. They thought he was going to come in. Oh, and he kept trying to tell them that, you know, that he was going to lay down his life and he was going to suffer many things. And, and they just, they couldn't see it. They couldn't figure it all out. Folks, there's a lot we can't figure out. There's a lot of this. I've been in this 48 years and a lot I do not know. You're not supposed to. And I'd be lying to you if I did. But God can reveal to you what you need to know. Amen. And the Bible said he would guide us all in the truth. That's His aim and His goal today. That's why we come together. That's why we sit under the Word of God that God might be able to teach us. Uh, Jesus said, Come unto Me and learn of Me. See, we're not trying to learn what the Pentecostal church teaches. That We did that for years. Or what the isms and schisms of the church are. See? But we, we're, we're, we're trying to learn of Jesus. He said, Come and learn of Me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. When you come to know Jesus, you'll, you'll learn something. Amen. I found out he's not what men said he was. Oh, that's right. He, he's a, but I know him. Don't try to tell me a bunch of stuff about him because I know him. See. Amen. Uh, you ever have somebody come and try to tell you something on somebody and you knew it wasn't true? Mm -hmm. And I had a man do that to me one time in this church. He come and I was sitting up on my... Uh, a little guitar like I always do and he walked up and I hadn't seen him while he shook my hand and he, he started into a big and he started telling me all about this brother so now wait a minute hold before you, before you go any further do you know this to be true oh yes he said oh yeah it is true I said how do you know this to be true I, I'd like to talk to the guy that uh, uh, you know that, that can get to, give me the lowdown on this I said I'm going to tell you something I've known that man for many many years we came into the truth about the same time back many several years ago now I know he's not perfect, and I, you know, I can see every fault he's got. You know, we all can, can we? And I know he's not a perfect as far as the world counts perfection, but he's served God all his life, and he's done the very best he knows how to do. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't believe he'd do that you're telling me he's done. I don't accept that. 
And I said, I, I'd be willing to go and talk to him with you. With, oh, he didn't want to do that. No. Start backing up. Start backing up. I said, no. and I finally pinned him down. Do you really know this to be true? Well, and so and so told him, and he told something. And he told, him, and he wouldn't lie, you know. <laughs> he wouldn't lie, but you know that's the way you get rumors started. They used to do this as an experiment in school. Yes. They'd whisper a, something in your ear and then go all through the class. And would, you ever, you ever uh -huh. do that in school? Uh -huh. We did that one time. The time it got to the end, you wouldn't believe what it sounded like from what it started out to me. And that, that's the way rumors are, right? right? I said, so you don't even know that to be true, do you? Well, he said, I believe it. I said, you can believe it, but you don't know it, do you? I said, you know, you ought to be telling things you don't know. And then if you tell it, you ought to go tell Jesus. There used to be an old song that said, don't tell my brother, don't tell another, just go and tell Jesus on me. Uh -huh. yes. That's right. He doesn't reveal everything for you to, for you to go tell somebody. Did you know that? Right. And he may absolutely show you something. He, he, he can do that. Yes, he does. Oh, I've had people come to get prayer and they, and they say, well, i got a bad sciatic here. i got something else wrong. And, and you lay hands on me, begin to pray, and the Lord speaks to you and says, that ain't what the problem is. That's right. <laughs> they don't want to tell you what the problem is, but that ain't what the problem is. Now, he didn't tell me that to get up and say, that ain't the problem, she's lying. <laughs> or to go tell everybody in the church, I happen to know what the problem is, you know. No. But he does reveal things to us. He trusts you. And that's why some people don't like to put a hand on them. They're afraid of what they might find out. Now, he don't show us something every time, so don't get excited about it. <laughs> and even then, we see vaguely. We don't, sometimes we're not even sure what we see. And then sometimes, I've had this happen, Brother Ronnie talk about this, he'll reveal something to you, by the time you get out of church, you forget it, and forgot really what it is. <laughs> but, he, but he'll do that. God yes. will do that. And, but don't think God don't know what's going on in your life, because he does. Amen. And he might reveal it to somebody for them to pray for you. Absolutely. See, because he really does care for you. He's not out to get you. Amen. You know, there used to be a song, God to get you for that. God's going to get you for that. God's going to get you for that, you know. No, God's not out to get you. Amen. He, he's, he wants to save you. He wants to bless you. Yes. Amen. And see, I, I, I learned that about him. See, I used to think that, that he was a big old bad boog boogeyman God. But he was out to get you, but I found out he's my father. I can talk to him. I can tell him all my troubles and all my weakness. And sometimes I do that. I say, Lord, you know me. I'm... As my mother used to have the worst one you got. <laughs> you know me, oh God, but you know I love you and I love to serve you and I, I want to Amen. remain with you. And sometimes I, I don't see a way, but I know you're able to help me to do what I need to do. That's the kind of a God that we serve. I, I, I saw the scripture one time where a man said, If you will, Lord, you, you can heal my eyes or you, I can't remember what it was Lord. now, but, but he said, Leper. The yeah, the Lord. leper. If you, if you will, Lord, if you will just touch me, you can make. He said, I will. Be thou whole. Amen. If you will, you can. He said, "I will." And that is, we've got an "I will" God. He will. He can do all things. He will. Amen. And 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 that's what we've got to hold on to, and what we've got to believe. I want to show you here that they thought they, uh, because they thought the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Oh, this is one of the greatest struggles we have been. Then Brother Louis sat back there and talked for quite a long time about this very thing. We just don't understand why it just don't come. We believe it. We know it. Don't tell me I don't believe. I believe. It just bothers me when people make like, well, I'm trouble. You, you don't believe in that. You ain't got enough faith. No, no. Let me tell you, I've stood when others fell. I've held on when others would have given up and went home. I've done without and believed God. I've given stuff away and wondered how I was going to get mine. Yes. Don't tell me I don't have any faith. I know I've got faith. Right. Yeah. Now, just exactly why God don't honor that the way I think He ought to, I don't understand that. <laughs> and sometimes He gives me a, yeah, He's God. He can do whatever He wants to do, right? right. I don't right. understand it all of His yeah. ways. I'd be lying to you if I said I did. I don't understand why sometimes we lay hands on people and a miracle happens. Right. Something totally unexpected. Something we wouldn't even... We, you know, it's hard for us to even believe. We asked for it, and we believed it, but it still astonishes that He did it the way He did it. Yeah. I mean, I'm in all of a sudden, my God, God never ceases to amaze me what He does. And, and, and then other times, seemingly, Nothing. seemingly, that's me, that's my problem. Seemingly, it don't happen. I don't know. 
But yet we got to believe that it did happen. Amen. And we don't see the end of the matter. Huh? But, and we have to by faith, we have to claim it and speak it and believe it. And we don't see it, we believe it. We don't see it, we believe it. And that's the only faith that God will accept. And I'm not telling you that's an easy thing to do. No. It's called working out your salvation. Uh -huh. Work it out. There used to be some black girls at the church I went to and they sung a song called Work It Out. Work it out. Mm -hmm. And then one of them black girls could get going. And I mean, they'd, yeah. they'd, they'd get going and they'd say, Work it out. Work it out. King Jesus can work it out. Yeah. Unpaid bills, work it out. Baby said to work it out. Car broke down, work it out. <laughs> now he's gonna work it out. <laughs> he, he'll work it out. I like Brother Pat was And we gotta work it out. <laughs> you know, we gotta work it out. Work out your own salvation with fear Amen. and trembling. Amen. Now when it's a work, it's a work. Yeah, and it's not easy. And the, we now we have doubt to deal with. We have confusion. Oh, I just know it. I just know it. I had a we had a man yesterday at the prayer breakfast, and I've known this guy for many many years, and he's been been a part of several different churches. Now he's in the Seventh Day Adventist, and I knew that when he come somewhere along the line, he was going to have some problems. When we we have people that are from. All kinds of different denominations. Sometimes we've had as many as 10, 12 different denominations. Amen. No problem. We worship. We sing together. We, we pray for our church. We pray for our city. We pray for our president. We, yeah. uh, you know, people don't know we're holding this town up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we, we, we're making this town what it ought to be. And and I have learned to love and respect every one of those brothers. We even we had some more young Mormon brothers come one time. And the first thing we tell them is, look, we don't preach doctrine. You know, leave your doctrine at home. Come, come and talk about the Lord Jesus all you want to. And, and they were very sweet and really some of the best speakers that we ever had there. They, 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 they stayed in the New Testament and they preached the Word and it was very, very good. And I got a lot out of them. But then I got up talking about Joseph Smith's time. I wouldn't want to hear that. Right? Because, I mean, to me, he's just another man. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. As I had one of them say, Yeah, read it in Joseph Smith's own words. I said, Sure, told me in here. He said, It's not in there. I said, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not in here. <laughs> well, essentially, this gentleman got on the same thing. And I, I, they said they had talked to him about it, but I just about knew when, when, he, when they had him speak, there was going to be some problems. Because they, they, he believes in the old law, and he believes in keeping the old law, and he, you know. And so he started into that. He tried to teach out the book of Revelations. Now here we are. We have a, a prayer breakfast. And we have about a 15, 20 minute sermon. Je Jennifer spoke up there. Rodney Hans, several of our young ministers have spoken at that prayer breakfast. And in about 15, 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes tops, they, they give a message. And it's not a two hour Bible study. And it's definitely not getting into things that would confuse. I, everyone in that place was confused how that man got done. Because he started talking about the beast. He was going to reveal who the beast was. Oh and I knew when he got done, what he was, he was, he was talking about the, the Catholic Church and the Pope. I knew that. Cause, oh, yeah. See, I was raised up in that. I heard that for years. And I sat there as long as I could. He went on and on and on and, and run the Catholic Church down in so many ways. And see, what he would say is, now, he said, in, in the prophecy terms, this is what this means. And finally I stopped him and I said, uh, where does that say that that means that? Well, he said, it's what it means in prophecy. I said, where's it at? Mm -hmm. I don't believe it means that. I think you believe it means something it don't mean. Come on, brother. And, and see, and everybody might look at that and have their own idea of what that means. Mm -hmm. And oh, he had the good theory, he had some good theories, and I wouldn't want this and all that. But I just, I said, I'm going to be honest with you. Can I be honest with you? I said, I sit under this thing. I, I heard them teach about the man of sin and the beast. Yes. They had big charts up and they had the League of Nations. Or they said it was the League of Nations. They didn't say the Bible's the League of Nations. But they said it was the League of Nations. And the League of Nations were destroyed. And, and so then, then the, the United Nations followed after that. Now, now what that means is this. And I said, where's that at? Well, that's in his mind. That's what that means. I said, about th three-fourths of what you're telling me is what you figured out for it means. But it don't say here it means that. I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I have sat under hours of this stuff. 
I used to say, they just keep us three, four hours. Yeah. You don't know. You think an hour of teaching is bad. We, we used to have to send out three or four hours at a time. And a lot of it, honestly, was just nonsense. Speculation. I said, if they had the best Bible teacher in the United States down here at the 4-H building or somewhere said, he's going to be teaching on Revelation, I wouldn't even bother to go. That's me. I'm, I just got to be honest with you. And, and I, I, don't you believe in the book of Revelation? Yeah, I do. And I believe God's able to reveal it to you. And I believe I understand part of it. Some of it I don't understand. So, and I know that there's times that it's talking about the past. Sometimes it's talking about the future. Sometimes it's talking about the present. I can, I can discern that out of the Word, out of the Spirit of the Word. But you, you can waste a lot of time getting into things. That, I said, I'm going to tell you something. They taught us uh, that by 1975, the world had to be gone, ended. <laughs> Now, this is back in about 65, 66, something like that. Mm -hmm. They taught us the world couldn't possibly stand past 1975. They had it all figured out. 2,000 years from Adam to Noah, 2,000 years from Noah to Christ, and at that time, it was 1,967 years from Christ to now. Now, we're coming into the seventh day, see? And there's only uh, 33 years uh, possible left. Now the Jewish calendar is four years ahead of our calendar. I mean they had it all figured out. They could almost get it down to the day. <coughs> Cannot possibly go past 1975. Where are we at today? We're way past 75. So if I'd have hung my head on that, you know, I'd like those guys at the, on January the 18th God's going to meet us up in the mountains and He's going to call us all out here. This happened out in California. People sold their properties. They got rid of everything they had and they went up to up in the mountains in California. January the 18th. Now that's way back several years. Some of you remember that. It was in all the papers. January 18th come and they were still up there waiting on him to come. So they finally said, well, 30 days from now. Some way they figured out they was, they'd miscalculated about 30 days. And the Bible's clear. No man knows the hour of the day. Now, that's Bible. That's not a bunch of prophecy gobbledygook. That's what the Bible said. No man knows. Not even the angels in heaven. No. My father alone knows the hour of the day. I believe it's said right now. And I believe when it, when it comes, hell or high water can't stop it. That's right. Amen. It's going to happen. Amen. <laughs> and I said, look, I, I don't want to offend you. I'm going to be honest with you. But I, I, I just wouldn't waste people's time with this. So naturally, he got into the Sabbath day. And I said, uh, you don't believe in the Sabbath day? Oh, I absolutely do believe in the Sabbath day. Yes, I do. But uh, Paul said we don't keep days. This new law freed us from keeping days. We used to keep one day a week because we had to. And now we keep seven days a week because we love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's called fulfillment of the law. Yeah. <laughs> and that which the law could not do. See, the law couldn't put that in your heart. But God put that in my heart to serve Him every day. I live a seven-day Sabbath. Yeah. There you go, now I'm not tied to a lot of tradition about it. If I want to eat some beans, I'll eat beans. I want to eat here after a while. Got some good stuff out there to eat. Amen. Right? And I, I, I probably ought to fast more than I do, but I'm not tied to that tradition anymore. Oh, and he starts he uh, oh he started giving me all the things about Jesus, talking about keeping the commandments and all all those kind of things. And I said, Jesus said the law and the prophets were learned till John. Amen. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and men press their way into it, or the vine and take it by storm. He said in another in another place. Say, the, the law and the prophets were until John. Again, he said, a new law I give unto you, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, on this hangs all the law of the prophets. It's all in that one thing. If you're filled with that love of God, you won't steal from your brother. No, nope. amen. Amen. You won't commit murder. No, you'll keep that law, but you'll keep it in your heart. Uh, uh, spiritually, it's just performed. It's just done. It's finished. When Jesus hung his head on the cross and said, It's finished. That's what he meant. It's over. It's finished. Mm -hmm. So thank God. All those 
all those things he nailed to the tree, those traditions, those things. I said, you know, Peter said that the law was a yoke upon our neck. Now here's a man that was really big on the law. I mean, he was he was a Jew, he was a Pharisee, he was he he was big on the law. He knew the law. But he said it was a yoke upon our neck, which neither we nor our fathers were able to bear. The law was instituted because of their lawlessness. It never was really what God intended. But he had to institute the law because of their lawlessness. And then he had to figure out a way how to save them from the law. And Paul told us that if we'd been uh, set free, not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What do you think he was talking about? He's talking about that law. I came out of sin. I was set free from the law of sin and death and came into the bondage of the church. I had to get set free from the church. <laughs> That's kind of sad, isn't it? Yeah. But see, you can get tied up and get get bound up in the church. Yeah, right. Isms and schisms I'm talking about. Thank God we don't and all the little idea. laws and things. Hang a, a sheet over and everybody's got to go by that. Now, and some churches do that. Here's our, yes, they do. Here's our bylaws. Here's what you do, you know. And they, they, they preach more standards than they do word. Uh-huh. And it's man-made things. I believe Jesus said that disregarding the commandments of God, you do follow the traditions Amen. of men. Amen. And it's church tradition. A lot of it's church tradition. We do a lot of things that's against the tradition, the church. That's why they, they always call us generic. Because when He sets you free, you're free. He on the Son sets free is free indeed. Guess what? You're free to go back into bondage if you want to. You, if you don't use your freedom right, you can get entangled again with the yoga of bondage. But now you have a choice. You've been set free, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have the, we have the freedom to, to reject the devil. Say, so get behind me, Satan. Huh? We, I don't, hey, don't whisper my ear. I enlist you, old Slewfoot. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Go by to somebody else. Now, I've said that. I don't know if you ever said it or not, but I've said it. Amen. Don't have me that, Slewfoot. I serve God. Get out of here. See, and but this is the war that that we're in. It's a personal war, and everybody's in that war. Brother Lewis going through that war is being tried. Your faith is going to be tried. I mean, the Bible said that a third part would come through the fire, tried as gold. Mm -hmm. You think you're not going to be tried? No. Yeah. And some of you know you're being tried. You know you've been tried. And it's not over yet. We're being tried. And we get, we get, uh, God, but God will bring us through. That's His promise. He will bring us yeah. through yeah. as pure gold. But in that, in that trial by fire, there's a lot of confusion. There's times you don't know which way to go. You don't know what you're doing. You just don't understand. There's, I mean, I've been down that road. There's, I look at this word and I know I know it, and I know I believe it, and I know I'm a man of faith. I know I trust God. I've seen him do it exceedingly abundantly above anything I could ask or think. I've seen him open doors when I just knew they was closed. But I want you to understand some there's times I thought I was absolutely right and found out later I was wrong. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Probably you said you won't admit your faults. Oh, he said, I admit them if I had any, you know. <laughs> That's the attitude some people have. I didn't admit them if I had any. Oh, wow. Well, when you really, uh, when you right. really get set free, you'll look and say, "Yes, I've got, I've got a lot of problems." Yes. I don't have any time to pick on anybody else. No. But I got my own self. We're I got to say, Pat. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I'll pray for you, but I, I, I got to say, Pat. He's the one I got to say. And it's the biggest job I have is keeping this man right here straight. Work out your own salvation. And I know I love God. And if I'm that sweet and good and, and everything and talented and good looking, I mean, you are, you are. Of course, <laughs> got you fooling. <laughs> no, I just love you. <laughs> All kids and dogs, no ladies do. I told somebody that last night. <laughs> kids, dogs, no ladies. All love me. <laughs> the rest of you just have to deal with me. I don't know what's going on. I, I think it passes for a scripture here. <laughs> they thought the kingdom of God should immediately appear. I, as, I, as I started studying this, I thought about that. 
I, uh, you know, the, one of the greatest things that when you come in this church, especially as a young, as a young saint, you're on fire and you found something that you never even knew existed. Uh -huh. It's another world for me. Uh, I, uh, I could think something would happen. You ever do that? Yes. I mean, I would think that this ought to be this way, and all of something is being done. I mean, it's scary. Yes. You just think about something that ought to happen, and God does it. He proves it. Man, that seems so easy, don't it? And and I, I believe He gives good gifts to His children, and you know, like that, like a little kid, you're just you're like a kid in the candy shop, and you want to give it to everybody, and before you know it, you're. You're trying to preach to people who don't want to hear it. Yeah. You're, you're sharing, make a nuisance out of yourself, make a yeah. pest out of yourself because you just you got this thing and it's so good and you want them to have it and can't contain it. <laughs> and then there's times we go through the dry places as God begins to work with us and try us. Uh, he digs around us. I remember one time Sister Betty had an old tree out there and I, I stopped by the house for one time and she was digging around and working lots. What are you doing? Well, I said, this old tree ain't uh, give us an apple in a long time. I'm going to try one more time to save this tree. And she was out there pruning over. She got done. There wasn't much left of it. She said, well, it'll either live or die. I don't know. You know, I, I, but, but the shape it was in, it really needed some work done on it. And that, that kind of work God does on us. And you know what? The first year, there wasn't hardly anything there. And the second year, there was a few. And the third year, it was just full of real, real nice apples. Yeah. And God had to do all that cut and all that trailing and all that work on it. And so sometime when we're being tried, he's he's approving and equipping and working with us trying to get us where we can bring forth more fruit. Yeah. That's right. We we should learn not to despise where we're at and what we're That's going right. through. There's purpose in it. God has purpose in your life. He'll teach you something. It caused men to look at you and see something going on in your life. Mm -hmm. People are not stupid. Mm -hmm. They know what's going on in your life. Amen. And they, they watch. They watch to see how you handle things. Mm -hmm. You know, when crisis comes along, they watch and see how you handle things. And it's hard sometimes to be patient and be sweet and trust mm -hmm. the Lord and believe Him. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the eternal struggle that we're in. You know, we have times when we're just soaring like an eagle. There's times that we're, we're higher than a kite. Time, that was a great time. Oh, God. And it will come back if you haven't seen one in a while. Just hang on. It will come back. Oh, yeah. But the fact of the matter is, the sweetest flowers grows in the valley. Some of the greatest things that's ever happened to me has been in a time of trial. Amen. In a time of struggle. Now, it's later that I look back and say, you know, God was with me all the time. Let me tell you what God did for me when everything was going wrong in my life and right in the middle of that, God was working. I didn't understand it. I didn't realize it, but now I see it. You ever do that? Yes. That's what God does. He gives you a testimony. That's yeah, and He'll send you back to the mountaintop. And a lot of times you're not, you're not shouting because you're on top of the world. You're just, acceptance has to take place with us. That we are His. We belong to Him. Whatever is going to come is going to come. Amen. And we can stand against it. We can resist it. We can believe God. We must do that. And most of all, stay in the Scripture. Claim the blessings of God. Claim the Word of God. Believe its promises. Hold on to it. And then if we don't receive it just right when we think we should or whatever, don't waver. Hold on anyhow. Believe anyhow. Right. 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 Because guess what, folks? When you get down to the end of the matter, this world is not our home. Amen. We're just passing Stop through. Over. Temporal. We're headed for a home, a city whose builder and maker is God. We will be at home there. We will receive every good thing that we've ever dreamed about. It's going to be there for us. There's not going to be anything withheld from us. In fact, it's not entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. It's way beyond our understanding. <laughs> it's going to be more than it's cracked up to be. There's a lot of things in this world that, that are not what it's cracked up to be. And you get it and you say, why is all the fuss over this? I say, nothing. Right. And people kill herself and do all kinds of things to attain certain things, and they get it and they say, and they say, is this all there is? Is this it? And they want more. See? 
But when we, when we get this thing God has for us, hey amen, it's, it's going to be more than it's cracked up to be. I'm going to say, wow, I never knew this is what this was. And you know, when you come to the Lord and when you really give your life to God, in the balance, see, we're in the balance. And when we balance our life with the, with the negative things and the positive things, who would turn back? Where would you go? Who would you go back to? And have the peace that you have now? The joy that you have now? The understanding you have about God? There's, a, there's nothing you can come against you. That's why I see the, the Bible said there be signs in the heaven above and the earth beneath, and that's some of the signs there. Some of us had glimpsed, uh, looked over into the promised land and got a glimpse of it. Amen. And just the taste that we've got makes us want, want, to, want it more. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. So that's why it was easy for me to do my mother's funeral, my father's funeral. Uh, I said, no, the hard part was watching them suffer and struggle the last several years of their life. My dad was a go-getter. He was always on the go. He was always working. He was going. And, and he walked so fast. When I worked with him at Ford Motor Company, I rode with him to work for a time. And uh, I would have to run to keep up with him just getting into the building. I mean, he had big old long legs. He was about six foot two, and he, I mean, he'd go. And I mean, I, I'm trotting up beside of him. I'm serious. And I said, why don't you slow down? You know, I wasn't mean? that big a hurry to get in there. But that's the way he went after everything. He, like he was chasing, you know, killing snakes. He was just, that's just the way he did. Anything he wanted to do, he wanted to do it right now. I'll tell you what we did. We farmed a four acre field one time with a hoe, as boys did. And I mean, we had to keep her clean, too, buddy. He'd have us out there with the hose, clean that out. Oh, yeah, <laughs> People wouldn't even do that today. No. <laughs> we, we had plenty, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, but that's the way he was. And to watch him go down where he couldn't even get out of bed, he just laid in bed. All he could do was lay in bed and watch Jimmy Swaggart and, and, and you know, uh, religious TV, whatever he could watch. And, and oxygen, he's on oxygen all the time. And uh, it, was, it was hard to watch him in that situation because I was always watching him all my life, having to run to keep up with him. He was just a go-getter. He just was. That's just the way he lived his life. And uh, but uh, but so it was kind of good to see him get free of that, you know. Because he was, I, I said, we believe this. I remember telling the doctor that one time. I said, see, we believe this. We're not one time telling you something we that somebody told us. <laughs> we believe this. Hallelujah. Well, you realize, he said, when I shut this, take him off this life support, he'll be gone. I said, well, that's not up to you. Amen. But if he is, guess what? It'll be all right. He told me he's ready to go. And he said, well, we're going to take him off this life support, and he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and the doctor finally turned to me and acknowledged it. Well, Brother Davis, you're right. This in God. He's getting stronger. He said, I, I believe he's going to pull through this. And he did. But eventually, when the time comes to go, he went. But I said, see, we believe this. We're not afraid of death and what waits on. We don't know. You know, we, we've heard people talk about it. We've heard people, you know, give testimonies about it. We've read things about it. We still don't know. But guess what? I'm not afraid. No, I'm, I'm more afraid of this world than I am that other world. Amen. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to be right at home. Amen. I do. I think I'm going to fit right in. Right. Amen. And you know it's good to have that, that peace in your heart today. I know my time is, is nearly gone. But anyway, uh, these things don't happen. Sometimes they do happen to me. Sometimes they're miracles. Sometimes they happen right now. Sometimes healing is a process and sometimes it's years to receive your healing. That part we don't understand. Sometimes people get it right now. And you've seen it. I've seen it. I have had it. And, and, and I, I know the circumstance. I know. I mean, I had a sister-in-law that she had cancer. I mean, she had. They didn't give her no time to live. And the church prayed, and we prayed, and they went, and and the, and the doctor said, "Put the X-rays up." And he said, "Here's this X-ray. There's the cancer. Now there's this X-ray. There's not the cancer." Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, and so I must confess to you, I don't understand it. I said, I understand it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the big hand of the Lord got it and changed things. Right. See, my faith, we can believe that we yeah. understand that. Amen. But yet there's been other times that seemingly it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. 
And that's tough. Yeah. That's but we way. still have to believe that some way God yeah. answered prayer. Some way yeah. uh -huh. He had His way. In our, in our uh, finite way of thinking, we don't see the answer. But there's an answer there. And oh, let me tell you something. What's going to be great? When we get on the other side, we'll say, Aha! I see it all now. Uh, all that will be opened up to all the mysteries of life, the Bible said. And we'll understand, yeah, guess what? God was right. He was right all the time. Yeah. I thought He was wrong, but He was right. That's, that is what we'll say. When we, when we come on a level with God. Now are we the sons of God, but it, and it does not yet appear Amen. what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Oh, and we'll see all this plan of God, and we'll say, wow, this is it. I understand it all now. I told, told this testimony many times about sitting and watching the Jeopardy game, back to way back years ago, when it was really one of the biggest shows on TV. And we watched the Jeopardy game. Not Jeopardy, but I meant the concentration. concentration. Yeah, you knew what I was talking about. You heard me tell it too many times. Yeah. <laughs> and they showed just a little bit of the puzzle. And you got to try to figure out the puzzle. And you see something there, and you try to figure out what that is. And pretty soon they show something else, and it makes it a little bigger. And you go, good Lord, what is this? And you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure it out. <laughs> And all of a sudden, they just throw just the right block in there. Ah, I know what it is. I know what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> Folks, that's the way our life is. Yeah. We see it, just a, just a portion of it. The whole thing is there. We just can't see it. That's right. But someday we'll look back and say, I see it, I see it, I see it. I and we'll understand. Our understanding will be open. That's going to be worth the trip. Mm -hmm. That's going to be worth every trial and It'll every be test. Worth it all. Even when we understand, we see things, we see the things that people do to babies and all kinds of things. And my God, it drives you nuts if you, if you thought about it very much. You'd just like to beat somebody to death sometimes, you know? My God, how can they do these kind of things to kids? How can they look at a little kid like this? It's just, well, if you, if you understood it, you'd be part of it. I guess that's what I always said, you know? But someday we will understand those things and that will be worth the trip but see this is walk by faith Amen. we walk by faith we don't walk by sight we walk by faith right. it's another dimension it's another world and we've been we've entered into that world but we have we don't fully understand it but we walk by faith we trust that God is with us every hour of every day that he's watching uh, what we do and he's whispering in our ear and he said this is the way to go go this way uh-huh this is the way, walk in and go yeah, this way. Yeah. This is the way. And we're listening for His voice. And sometimes we just think we really, we know that voice and sometimes we don't. I hope I can speak words of faith to you today because this is the struggle we're in. And some of you are in a real struggle. And Lord, I've been in those places. It's not a it's not a good place to be. But it's a good place. But it's not a happy place. It's hard. It's hard. But just trust and obey. The song says there's no other way. No other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. I have people come to me and say, Brother Pat, what about this? And they think, oh, they will just throw some answer out there to them. That's honey, to be honest with you. I don't know. Why is this this way or why not? I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I cannot answer that for you. Do you ever get the answer? You come and give it to me. I don't know. There's things I just don't understand. But I'll tell you one thing I, I will not tell you I understand. Is the feeling I have in my heart towards God and His people and His kingdom and this gospel. The older I get, the more I love it. I, I love it when it beats me to death, when it knocks me for a Jew whiz. I love it anyhow. When it rebukes me and reproves me, I love it anyhow. Right? Amen. When I fail so miserably, I have to say, God, forgive me. Help me, oh God. I, I love it anyhow because I love truth. I, I love truth. I love not being ashamed to, to face God. And I do sometimes. I lay on my bed a lot of times and I say, Lord, I just love you. I yeah. just love you. Yeah. I thank you for the love and peace that I have. Uh, I, a lot of times I lay for a long time in bed like that and just say, Lord, I love you tonight. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I thank you for the peace that's in my heart. Oh, no, no, no. I thank you for my little church and the people you gave me to worship oh, with. Oh, and I just thank you for the way that you come in our midst and you teach us your ways. And Oh God, there's things I don't understand, but I trust you and I believe your word. Yeah. Oh. Children of God, we got a wonderful thing here. Yeah, yeah. It comes straight out from the throne of God, straight out from the heart of Jesus, is where this thing came from. It's called agape. We've got it. He gave it to us. The word didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Amen. But it's a God that yeah, came right. out from God. Amen. I thank Him for it. I praise Him for it. God bless you today. I love you. I hope you get something out of this. Yeah.